Last time we spoke, that was just an idea that you had come up with and you were starting to go forward with it. You were building artwork and everything. And now we're talking about the end result, but like, what about creating the game itself? Like, how were you testing it out? How were you getting it ready? Like, how do you know it works? Like, how does that part work out? Well, we had we had some opportunities before COVID-19 shut everything down mm -hmm. to actually get out into play spaces and show it to people. So we took it to a couple of game stores. We took it to a couple of gaming cafes. Uh, our local library has a game night, so we took it there oh. as well. Uh, and we did have, I, I almost had a tournament set up, actually, in a small town called Rockton, which is not far from us. They That's have cool. a whole community of gamers there, and they, they play in like a Quonset hut. They have this gigantic space where they all come together and play. And I think they have about 30 players or 30, 30 members. Okay. So we could have literally run a tournament. We had enough packages of Honey Bomb on hand to do a to do a tournament. So I was really looking forward to that because it would have been 30 people's opinions of all ages, of all types of gameplay experience playing our game. It would have been great, a really great night uh, to learn some things. It's, you know, is it a good game? Is it, you know, what mechanics work? What don't? How can we make it better? And unfortunately, it got canceled too. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we've done, uh, because we can't meet people in person, we can't go to the conventions and show them our prototype, we can't do any play testing of that sort, we've actually made it free. So what we've done is we've, we've made a print and play edition oh, that okay. you can download off our website. Um, if people want to get a copy of it, they can go to ramstargames.com and get a copy of Honey Bomb. And they can print it off at home. Uh, it's formatted to print double-sided, just like our tiles are double-sided, and all you have to do is cut it out and give it a shot, you know? <laughs> and so now our outreach is, is that. We're trying to put it in people's hands in another way so that they can try it out in the comfort of their own home uh, with their kids, their families, whoever, and, uh, and give it a shot and then tell us what they think about it. You know, you know, how did it play for you? Did you like this? Did you like, you know, what was, what can we change? How can we make it better? That also seems very time intensive or was that, are you just using say the prototype setup that you had already that you were using or the printout thing? Like you had to go and then create a printout game. That's not just like, Oh, we built a website and instantly the game appeared there. No. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work yeah. it is. to anybody who wants to run their own business. Don't think it's going to be all, you know, wine and roses. It really is. It's, it's a lot of work. It's, you know, nose to the grindstone. I, I usually work right. anywhere from eight to 10 hours or 12 hours every day. I'm, I'm, but because I'm being creative, I don't see it as work. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm playing, for me, it's play, but it's it's still, you know, the end goal is is business related. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it um it it wasn't too hard to actually make a print and play. It was it was more uh, setting up, taking our artwork and setting it up inside of a document that I could turn into a PDF. Okay. So yeah, that wasn't that wasn't too intensive. That wasn't too bad. And how is the uh, how has it been going so far? I mean, with that and what you've learned, and you're waiting like, what is the process? What what comes next? How are you setting it up for next year? Like, what's changed, or what is going to change? Well, uh, right now, so what we're what we're doing is we're working with the manufacturer in China to repackage our uh, our original package for Honey Bomb was too big, too full of air, and shipping useless cardboard essentially. Oh, so, okay. I had one idea in my head of how to put it together, and Gary who chatted with me, gave me other ideas and sort of said, try this instead. You know, I told him how big the game really was. And he's like, your box is way too big. You're putting it in, you know, it's, it's pushing your shipping to the next tier because of the size of it. And are you designing the box? Like the, the actual package itself, or do you have somebody that's doing that for you? Uh, we're going to do it ourselves. Uh, okay. As long as we have the dimensions, we're good. Okay. The, the manufacturer will actually set up a guide for us. Um, a template that we can populate hmm. with our with our own design, uh, and it's um it's it's quite um it's quite well put together. So when you get that, it'll show you the the proper print area, your your bleed area, and your margins and all the rest of it. And this you know you have to make sure that you hit you, you know give yourself room for for printing errors and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, so it's all it's all very well organized, 
and and we're yeah we're savvy enough we're tech savvy enough to to do it ourselves well that's good yeah because so, that's yeah. what i realized is as you when i open a game you know it's got like the little compartment for the cards and the little box for the you know and the board has to fit in there and it never occurred to me like Again, it's one of those things where it's like, it just happens. No, it has to be designed somewhere. <laughs> Duh. Yeah. Which is another just, thing that well, takes up your time. I mean, how are you managing this? And meanwhile, working on a three week long project that you're painting type yeah. stuff, you know? <laughs> well, truth, truthfully, the truth of it is one has to win out. Uh, I've been trying to do two things at once and one has to win out. So okay. at the moment's, the, the iPad that I picked up recently is all about learning how to do things digitally. Mm -hmm. uh, and the skill set that I already have for airbrushing and art in general has really translated very easily to, to the iPad. I understand form and function, and I've used Photoshop enough to understand layers and this, that, and the other thing. So switching over to digital has not been too tough. As you as you said, you saw my pieces, and you're like, that looks just like his art. It does. And, yeah. yeah. And it's it's really um, user friendly for me. I love it. I think it's I think it's really uh, going to be good for me to go in that direction. Uh, and the whole idea behind it is is basically is to start learning digital enough to make our next game. So for me, the fine art side of what I was doing uh, over like a year ago that I started a year ago, I'm kind of bringing that to a close to a degree. So I will still be doing fine art when the bug bites me of course i need to pick up a, a you know a pencil and get going on something but i probably will be dialing back actually physically creating art and going more into the digital side of things and learning how to bend what i do to another product line to another process mm -hmm. so one of the things that i've realized like we're we're avid gamers as well we play a lot of a lot of games and we're into the really the more creative side of of gaming, so all the stuff that's big imagination, you know, it's it's Cthulhu taking over the world. It's it's how did the ghost die? Here's your weird imaginary cards to try to figure it out. It's it's all the Disney games. It's all these escape rooms and other things. We like that engagement, um, and I'm finding that my artwork fits inside of those games. Yeah, like that the bizarreness and the weirdness that I generally produce that I've been trying to sell on as fine art is going to be a huge hit inside of board gaming because anything goes in board gaming. It doesn't really matter as long as it's fun. People love it. And you know, the, the more creative the artwork, people love that too. If you really put your, you know, your effort into it, it comes back. People look at it and go, wow, what a great game. I really love the way this looks. And people have, constantly complimented the artwork for Honey Bomb. So I'm sort of putting two and two together, and what I really want to do is now start moving completely in that direction for Ramstar Game. 